In this Microsoft Excel tutorial, we will create a bar chart from scratch that has two categories of data. This is the chart we are going to create with data that I made up reporting the number of sales for a retail company that sells boots. As you can see, this chart has two categories of data. The first is the quarter, so we can see sales by winter, spring, and so on. The second category of data is the type of boot sold which gives us our three bars within each quarter. Let's jump into Excel and begin. To create our chart, we'll divide our work into three steps, putting the data into the right format, creating the chart, and applying design principles to make sure that it communicates the data effectively. When creating a chart in Excel, it's important that the data is formatted correctly. Let's look at our data rolled up by one category, the quarter. If we highlight this table and insert a bar chart, then click on the plus sign to the right of the chart and show the legend, we can see that the chart is correctly showing the number of boots sold by quarter. This is the data that we are going to use to create our chart, reported by two categories, the quarter and the type of boot. So for quarter one, we see our hiking boots, work boots, and snow boots. And the same for quarter two and so on. If we look at the grand total, 9467, it's the same information, just broken down by two categories. I highlight this table without including the total. Insert the same type of bar chart and show the legend. You can see that this is not what we're looking for. We want a legend that has the three different values of boot type, hiking boots, work boots, and snow boots, as in our original chart. In Excel, each column of data is represented by a series. We add a second column, just enter random numbers, I click on the chart and select the data. Now include the second column. You can see that our legend now has two values one for number sold and one for column. This tells me that I want to take the category boot type, have the three values of boot type displayed as horizontal columns. The quickest way to do this is with a pivot table. So I will select this table and insert a pivot table. I already have the range selected and I do want it on a new worksheet. Panel to the right allows me to format the pivot table. If I click away from the table, it disappears, so make sure you're clicked on the pivot table. I'll move the quarter to the rows, the boot type to the columns. You can already see that this format is going to be what we're looking for. All we need are the numbers, so I'll drag the numbers sold to the values. I'll highlight the data, and I'm not going to select the totals because I don't need those. So just the column headers and the data without the totals, and just do a simple copy from the home ribbon. Or of course you can click Control C or Command C on a Mac. I'll return to my data tab. And I also have a color scheme here ready to go. And now I will paste values because I don't want the pivot table. I only want the values in the pivot table. Let's put a border around this table so that we can see what we're working with. And we'll do a quick check. In quarter two, the number of work boots sold is 1490. 
order two work boots, fourteen ninety. The grand total is ninety four sixty seven. If we select all these numbers, we can see our sum is ninety four sixty seven. Now, when I create the chart. It's exactly the format that I'm looking for. The chart selected, I'll click the plus sign next to it and show the data labels. This allows me to just do a quick check. So quarter one, snow boots, 1120. Quarter one, snow boots, 1120. Excellent. I will now copy this chart, open a new worksheet and paste it. So the original chart is still here in case I need to go back to it, but this is the chart that we are going to format. Although the data is rendered correctly, there are a lot of changes we can do to make this chart easier to read. The first thing I'll do is work on the text. I'll select the legend, and from the plus sign, click on the arrow to the right of legend, and move it to the top. Change the font to 18. And make sure that the text color, which Excel often defaults as one of these lighter shades, but I want it to be black. I think that it is much sharper that way. I will select the data labels for the first series. I have not found a way to select all of the data labels at once. You can see that the first bar in each quarter is selected and change the font to 12 and again the font color to black. And for the x-axis, I a size 14. In the chart area, because we have the data labels showing, I can hide the grid lines by selecting them and pressing delete and do the same for the vertical axes. I will now select the X axis because the line is a little bit faint and right click on it and select format axis. This gives me my panel on the right where I can format the axes. Another way to do this is to use the format menu that appears whenever you have the chart selected. So with the axes selected, I go to format and format selection. This gives me the same result. Go to the fill in line, which is the first category, and click on line, solid line, Change the color to black. I want to change the colors of the chart and I already have a color scheme that I want to use. I find that by putting the color scheme in the worksheet, it makes it easier to find the actual colors. And I will show you what this means. So if I select the first series, so you can see each of the first blue bars are selected. Click on the fill in line icon, go to fill, Solid fill, color, and the drop down. Recent colors is showing up here. These are the colors that I have on the other worksheet. So the first category is hiking, and I want that to be green. Blue for snow boots, and brown for work, work boots. Type in our title. I think the font size is fine. I will make it bold and the color black. It would be nice if there were a little bit of space between the two lines in the title. 
So I'll click on it, move the cursor to the end of the first line, and press a hard return. And then I'll just type some letter like A so that I can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to select that letter and then change the font so that it's super small. In the drop down box, it, it says the font only goes to eight, but you can actually type in a font. So I'll try four. I think that looks good. And then I'll just replace the A with a couple of spaces. I will select the legend and give it a, and highlight the background, which I can do here. See, you can change the background to what you want and you can also do it over here under Format Legend. Fill. And also expand the legend so that it is as wide as the first line of the title. Our last step is to add a description for each of these quarters. If we look back at the chart that we are wanting to create, it has the description on the second line. To do this, I'll go back to the data for our chart and off to the left of the table, I will type in a description of those seasons. So quarter one is winter. Right click on the chart, select data. I want to edit the horizontal axis labels. So I'll click on edit. And you can see that the dotted line is highlighting what is being used for the axis label. So I'll change that highlighting to include all of this information and click OK. Excel has defaulted lines between the category values, which I do not want, and there's also some extra space here that I don't want. This is an easy fix. I'll select the horizontal axis, and under Format Axes, the very last option is Axes Options, Labels, the box that says Multi-Level Category Labels, I will uncheck. So if I check the box, the lines come back, and if I uncheck them, they go away. So what makes this chart effective? The title tells us what we're looking at. The legend is easy to read. The data labels provide precise numbers. There's enough spacing between the quarters. Having two categories of data makes this chart very useful. It can help determine how much inventory is needed in winter and where you might want to increase sales. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoy learning about working with data, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.